All right, this is the last thing we have to talk about with propositional logic, and we will finally be done and can move on to actual math. So, the contrapositive. Suppose I have statements P and Q again, then the statement P implies Q is the same as not Q implies not P. And that's what the contrapositive is, that the contrapositive is this statement here, and that it's always, it's equivalent to the original one. So whenever you have a statement P implies Q, it's the same as saying the contrapositive not Q implies not P. So let's prove that, and unfortunately we have to do another one of these atrocious truth tables. So I know they're not fun, but we will be done with this soon. Okay, so we have P, Q, not P, not Q, P implies Q, and not Q implies not P. Okay, and we have four possible configurations just as in the last video. Okay, so let's fill this out. Well, if both of these are true, their negations of course will be false. And if you have a true premise and true conclusion, then P implies Q is true. Now, if not Q is false, well, the premise is false, so you know this is true. Right? Anything with a false premise has um, is true. If you start with a false premise, then this statement will be true. Okay. And then, um, let's see. So, if this is true, its negation will be false. And if Q is false, its negation will be true. So if you have a true conclusion, oh, sorry. If you have a false conclusion and a true premise, then this statement is false, right? That's the only time that this is false, is when you have a true premise and a false conclusion. And now let's look at this. If not P, well, not P is false and not Q is true, so it's the exact same thing. You have a true premise and a false conclusion, so this is false. So far, so good again, right? We have agreement between these two statements. All right, now we have false and true, so just fill that out quickly. P implies Q. Well, you have a true conclusion and a false premise, whatever. So the point being that the conclusion is true, so it's going to be true. All right. And then not P is true. So you have a true conclusion, and therefore this statement is true. And now if they're both false, then their negations will be true. And if you have a false conclusion and a false premise, then it's true. The only time that this is going to be false was in the instance where the conclusion was false and the premise is true. And now the same thing, both of these are true, and so this is true. And you will see now that we have agreement between all of these things, so these are logically equivalent statements. So whenever you have a statement, you get its, or whenever you have like an implication statement like this, you get its contrapositive for free. Now it's worth pointing out that the converse, the converse of a statement, for instance, if I have P implies Q, the converse of P implies Q is Q implies P. And of course, this is not always true, right? These are not equivalent statements. For instance, every, uh, every square is a rectangle, every square, if it, otherwise, square implies that it's a rectangle, but being a rectangle does not imply that it is a square. There are many rectangles that are not squares. So converses are not equivalent, they're not equivalent. And that's it, but the contrapositive is. The contrapositive is equivalent to the original statement. So, there you go. We are now done with propositional logic and we can move on to set theory.